Jay Leno's Garage. Today we are being visited by True Automotive Royalty. This is one of my favorite cars of all time, or a version of one of my favorite cars of all time. This is a 1932 Mercedes-Benz SSKL Office. This is a race car based on the legendary SSK. Seven liter engine, supercharged, dual carbon. This was the height of technology in the late 20s and early 30s. One of the most amazing cars of all time. In fact, the SSK is probably the basis for every bad replica car kit you've seen over the years, like the Excalibur and some of these other things with the open fenders. It's just an amazing car with this supercharger that makes just the most screaming noise you've ever heard. Oh, it, it's just a legendary car, and we're going to drive it today. Uh, this car has been recreated by Mercedes-Benz. It is an actual SSK chassis. This car was built by Mercedes-Benz using all authentic Mercedes-Benz components. Uh, they commissioned the body to be an exact replica of the actual car that won the race. Let's bring in Michael Coons from the Mercedes-Benz Classic Center. Michael, how are you? Thanks Good. for bringing this. Nice oh, to be boy. here. This is just unbelievable. You know, this is one of the cars I first saw when I was a little kid, you know, it just made all the right noises and, 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 and looked massive, looked imposing. Uh, this just frightened the hell out of every other race car that was around back yep. in the period. And it's seven liters, correct? Correct, yeah. yep. Overhead cam. Yep. Uh, and with what they call the elephant blower, the elephant supercharger. Yep, yep. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to go for a ride with Paul Russell. He rebuilt the uh, Count Trossi car. Yeah. Uh, and they, I think they won Pebble Beach, but we took it out for a run. And when you put your foot in it, and the horsepower would jump from, I think then, what was it, maybe 160 to yeah. a little over 200. Yeah. Yeah. Whee! Make this screaming <laughs> noise. And it was legendary because uh, I guess all the, uh, all the drivers had the instructions to not have the supercharger on for more than 10 seconds Not overdo at a time. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tim Burke, and that's how he won that time. He overheard. Yeah. One of the German mechanics on there, I do, do not go more than 10 seconds or the, it will stress the part, you know. Yeah. So he, he pushed the car, he, you know, he pulled up next to him and kept egging on his, his Bentley against the uh, Mercedes and the, and the supercharger finally let go. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, just, yeah. just all those great yeah, yeah. race stories, you know. So, so tell us about this, how long it took, uh, what was the impetus behind it? Well, uh, it's about reliving history, right? And uh, this car has an interesting history in that it is an SSK uh, L version, so a lightened version of the car. Uh, that won, um, the original car won the Avis race in Berlin. And that race was on a uh, track that was created for testing highway use. Basically, the acronym stands for vehicle uh, uh, testing uh, uh, run. And uh, you basically could take a car on it and see how it handled. So it was basically a straight ahead course, five miles down, five miles up, uh, with a turnaround on each side on what are public roads today and public roads back then yeah. as well. And this, of course, to me, the standard SSK road model is the most attractive. Yeah. Because yeah. aesthetically pleasing to the eye, mm -hmm. aerodynamics did not play a part in that. Mm -hmm. It was just aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. This is so odd looking, especially yeah. with that front, you yeah. know? It looks like somebody punched it in the face and got a big red nose, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is proof that aerodynamics aren't always the most pleasing to the eye. You know, you'd think it would be, but but it's not. Like, yeah. we were talking earlier, like the Countach, people think it's aerodynamic. It's like a brick. Yeah. A Volkswagen Bug actually has better aerodynamics mm -hmm. than a Countach. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with this. It, because it looks, it, the front almost looks too big, but I guess that's for the air to go around it and yep. also channel into it with that huge opening. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. about, what, two feet into that opening, you see the standard radiator yeah. for yeah. the SSK Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the thought was back then, you know, to gain an edge on, uh, on competitors. So this particular car uh, went uh, back to Stuttgart and that area and got an aerodynamic body based on the principles of a designer, early, early uh, aerodynamic designer, uh, Baron von Foxenfeld. Mm -hmm. And he knew that you didn't have to continually make the engines larger. Uh, you could gain something by uh, aerodynamics. So uh, they built the aerodynamic uh, body, and, uh, and sure enough, when it ran at Avis uh, against another privateer with an SSK, it was 
20 kilometers faster on the straightaways uh, on that race. And uh, so it proved that it really did make a difference. Uh, they called the car the cucumber. Mm -hmm. It does kind of look like a cucumber. It's not necessarily pretty to your point, uh, but it's effective. And uh, that is how that came about. You don't need to make the engine bigger, but this was a big engine by any yeah. standard of the day. Yeah. It was seven liters yeah. with twin carburetors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two valves per cylinder? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, okay. So uh, the whole line of those cars, the S, the SS, and the SSK, and the SSKL, these were often referred to as white elephants because they were large. The racing color at the time was white, right. of course, German racing color. They were large, they were imposing, they were fast, they were, you know, kind of a, a, a car that you could not overlook. So they were called the white elephant. Uh, this particular car uh, did not get its paint because uh, they didn't have time. Right. And uh, the car was driven uh, after they completed the body, driven right to the race to practice at the race, and there was no time to uh, paint the body. Uh, this is where also the origins of the silver arrows lie. Uh, we know uh, from a radio broadcast, there was a radio broadcast at that event, the first radio broadcast right. at a uh, racing event, they referred to the car as the silver arrow. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I, there were so many rumors, that's what I love about this era, uh, the rumor was the car was white, not this one, and it was like a, a few uh, a kilos. Which, they had a to, few kilos yeah. over the weight limit, so he demanded that the paint be stripped off. Yep. That got it under the limit. Uh, any truth to that rumor? There is truth to that, yeah, okay. but that is not really the origin of the right, car, right? Okay. The origin of the phrase lies with this car because they often reference that radio broadcast from back then, where they talk about the Silver Arrow. You know, it's such a you almost, it's almost politically incorrect to say the term manly car back in the day, but it really is, you know, the, I mean, the steering wheel, everything. When you look at Bugatti or some of the Italian stuff, very light, yeah, very yeah. feminine, very Filigrane, sort of, yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas the German stuff was always strong, Heavy metal. <laughs> massive, yeah, just bulletproof. And of course, seeing these legendary names on the side of the car just kind of, I don't know, it just brings back a lot of impressionable memories. Because yeah. when I was a teenager, you'd read about these, you know, but you never think you're going to see one yeah. in person. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what I love about the Mercedes Classic Center. No matter what Mercedes you have, even an SSK, even something like this, Mercedes Benz will supply the part. Yeah, in this case, we made the body, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, just amazing. It's, and it still looks powerful. You know, there's nothing antique looking about yeah, it. You know, yeah. it doesn't look like, oh, what a silly race car that is. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it looks like something that could still scare you to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're running at 140, 150? Uh, 150. Yeah. Uh, they could run 150, and, and, and the Avis race was a pretty much a straight line race, so you have to be pretty brave. Three speed or four speed transmission? Four speed. It's four, four speed, speed transmission. Yeah. Okay. I find the, the rear of the vehicle much more attractive than the front. Yeah. <laughs> You know, this is sort of the uh, the era of the, you know, the the cam back had not been had invented not come yet. Into play. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. come into play. This sort mm -hmm. of looked like the natural flow of mm -hmm. things. Because mm -hmm. uh, even, did Germany have wind tunnels at the time, or did they just sort of? I, I think they were just sorting that out, just yeah, beginning with yeah, that, right? Yeah. Because they didn't really understand what aerodynamics were. It was really a, a theory at that point. Uh, and then they could prove the theory with a car like this. And of course, as even today, the real limiting factor in these automobiles was tire technology. Mm -hmm. Because no tires had ever gone 150 miles an hour in mm -hmm. 1932. Mm -hmm. And so it took a lot of guts to drive these things because you didn't know what was going to happen. Right. I mean, no. there's no roll bar. This is not a roll bar. No, no recovery, really, yeah, if something yeah, goes wrong. Yeah. yeah. And, and of course, all manual steering, uh, no disc brakes. No. Brake fade was fairly common. I mean, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it took a Plan lot of guts. Plan your stops. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that almost looks like the dashboard from the production model, is it? It is, yeah. it is. Yeah. What, what you have underneath is really a standard SSKL. Uh, there are only four SSKLs to in total built. Uh, so this car, uh, the frame was an SSK frame that we then lightened and drilled uh, to replicate the SSKL configuration. Uh, but it is a standard SSK underneath. Yeah, that was sort of, people did not know the true tensile strength of metal so they would just build the biggest, heaviest frame they could, mm -hmm. and then, all right, let's drill holes let's and see what happens. Let's see what happens. <laughs> well, let's show people the real heart of this piece because this is an impressive piece of 
engineering uh, the engine compartment. Okay, that's uh, that's serious business. That's quite <laughs> impressive. Here is the famous elephant blower that we spoke of, and that probably took 25 horsepower to run. Would you say yeah, easy? Yeah, easily. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, twin carburetors, as you the can see. Carburetors are actually even newly constructed. We had to make them. We didn't have them anymore for oh, this particular right? engine. Yeah. So they're they're actually newly made, uh, but as they were back in the day. And the supercharger blows into the carburetor. Mm -hmm. This is a, like an auto vac. Well, it's a it's a additional tank, and basically uh, under uh, boost, it's pulling gas from that tank at a higher pressure. Oh, so when so when you engage a supercharger, you're sucking more fuel from here. From there, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And this probably gets about two miles per gallon. Something <laughs> it like it probably doesn't register at all. Uh, probably yeah, just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but by that time, yeah. You, 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 yeah, it didn't matter. <laughs> But it's just such a beautiful piece of engineering. Look at this, oh my God. One of the great engines of all time. And it's so massive for a six cylinder engine. Yeah. As we said, seven liters, which is about 421 cubic yeah. inches if you're yeah. American. Yeah. A steering box right yep. here. And then about uh, in an SS configuration, 225 horsepower. In an SSK and an SSKL, 320 horsepower. I mean, that doesn't sound like a huge amount today, but when you realize the Ford V8 was 65 horsepower, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody went more yeah. than 45 miles an hour. And you hear you're doing 150 yeah, back at that I time. Mean, yep. Yeah, at 150 miles an hour would be like 250 today. It'd be like 300. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not even a figure most people can, can relate to. Mm -hmm. You know, what used to happen when they used to have the city-to-city -city races in Europe, people had no idea how to judge speed. So they'd walk out on the track and they'd watch the car, and boom, and they would get hit <laughs> yeah. because they couldn't believe yeah. the fastest thing they'd seen yeah. was a horse galloping yeah. towards and yeah. a horse you could get out of the way. Yeah. And you look, oh, is that a I mean, they would well, literally still, get run over. And you still have that today to some extent in Germany if you're on the Autobahn and you have to be able to judge that traffic coming at you very right, well right. because he's going much faster than you are. And look at the radiator, the, the famous mm -hmm. V. I mean, look at the tolerances, how close it is there. And this is a gear-driven fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just so over-engineered, just beautiful. Oh, man, this is an amazing, amazing vehicle. And where do you hear that supercharger? It's, it's really fantastic. Uh, can we open the other side? Yeah, let's, let's, yeah let's, we're going to take the hood totally off. So we have to kind of undo this if you Let me go pull around the pin. And... If you undo that side. There's a pin. Once you're ready, I'm going to pull the pin. Want me to lift this? Okay. I'm just going to get the pin out. Okay, we're out. And then we're going to go forward with it. Okay. It's amazingly light. Aluminum. We'll put it down. Oh, this is how it should be seen. But I just love the sheer mechanicalness of it. It's all form follows function. You can logically see how everything works. You know, modern cars are so much electronics. You've got mm -hmm. a black box here that can control everything from the brake lights to you the You have no turns. idea, so right? You yeah. just have no yeah. idea what yeah. anything does. Here, you can follow everything to its logical yep. conclusion. Yeah, just, just, I can't imagine what this engine must weigh. Obviously, cast iron. Mm -hmm. What else do we Massive have? piece of machinery. Oh, it is. It's, it's, it's so impressive. Look at those big shocks down there. And of course, hydraulic brakes with thin brake it's drums. A, it's a rod-based uh, system that pushes the rod out into eccentrics that push it against the brake, uh, push the brake shoes out. It's not so, hydraulic? No, it's not hydraulic. There's oh, a, it is. There's a, a rod. Uh -huh. There's a rod over here that's uh, connected to the pedal. That's, uh, now, I would have thought by 32 that they would have. Yeah, that not, not But not I guess they were afraid of yeah. boiling fluid, weren't yeah. they? Well, of course, uh, the origins of the car are a little bit earlier. Right. But you see a rod down here? Yeah. That's actually the brake pedal rod. And what you're doing is you're pushing these rods out that are in the arms there to, an, to eccentrics that are pushing shoes out to the brakes. So, so the, once again, it's all Mechanical, very mechanical. Yeah, but all foot pressure. All there, foot pressure. There's no booster. I mean, no. you're on those brakes with both <laughs> yeah, feet. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that was Henry Ford's thing. He didn't like hydraulic brakes. He used yep. to say the safety of steel from pedal to wheel, yep. you know, because yep. hydraulic brake, well, there's fluid in there and that fluid yeah. could leak out. Sure. But I would imagine running fluid at 150 miles an hour, 
you could boil it fairly easily. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you okay. do lose a little bit of pressure through the rod because right. the rod flexes a little bit too. Yeah, so it's yeah. not totally optimal, really. But uh, it is what it is from back then. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's so funny. Cars have always been fast. The real sophistication is the braking and the handling. Mm -hmm. You know, because. I mean, you can go fast. Can you stop it? Right? Yeah, yeah. A hundred years ago, you could go a hundred miles an hour. There yeah. wasn't a problem. It was just, what do you do when you get there? You know, oh, just fantastic. But it shows you the, just the integrity of the design. It's basically the standard engine from the road car. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously tuned to uh, optimum performance and everything. Yep. But there's nothing here that you couldn't get. As a no, customer. I mean you could you could buy these cars as road-going cars, whether it was an S, an SS, or SSK, uh, not an L, of course. There's just four Ls uh, right. that were made, but these were road-going machines, and they came with touring bodies, all sorts of configurations. Yeah. Uh, so whatever you wanted, you could get that. I mean, driving something like this in 1932, would, I, I didn't even know what the equivalent would be today. Bugatti Chiron, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there was nothing. Well, you really? think about a modern car, how, how easy it is to drive a modern car. This is not easy to drive, right, necessarily. Right. The controls are very heavy, yeah. um, so it's, it's a, quite a different era. But I imagine its speed will probably lighten up a bit. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. I, I look at it and I say, this is a, like a mechanical device pure, right? Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. nothing other than heavy mechanics working here, yeah. you know, in this engine. The entire vehicle, for that matter. And that supercharger is really just, just a work of mm -hmm. art. Yes, on demand yeah. uh, uh, via a clutch yeah. off of the crank. Yeah. Uh, as you said, just designed for short bursts, but if you wanted to be competitive, you kind of pushed, pushed it more, but there was an issue with that. To your point, the race where the Bentley driver egged the other driver on, right, and right. they knew that, you know, okay, you couldn't sustain that. So it was really intended for short term. Yeah, and these really didn't break, did they, on the mm -hmm. track? These mm -hmm. just, just massive mm -hmm. dependability, just, mm -hmm. just hugely impressive piece of machinery. Well, let's show people what you had to do to drive a race car in 1932. Obviously, your steering wheel. This is your advance and retard on the ignition. So you put it here to start, and then once you're running, you advance it. This is a hand throttle, which is more for uh, the road-going car than a race car. Mm -hmm. You know what you have in a race car. In effect, car. cruise control for today. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. like a cruise control. This is your speedometer right here, which is very unusual to have a speedometer in a race car. Yep. And a clock, which is even more unusual. I mean, so, if you say, hey, I wonder what time it is. <laughs> you've got bigger problems on your mind if you're driving this thing at 150 miles an hour. Hey, what's the time? Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Well, straight from the production yeah, car. Yeah, but this yeah. is the only gauge that matters. This is your tachometer. Notice it only goes to 4,000. I guess 3,000 is probably just about the end of the line, isn't it? Well, they would push it to 4,000 in right, race. Right. Yeah, yeah. But those were huge revs back then. Oh, yeah. Then. Oh, yeah. I mean, something moving it. 4,000 revolutions per minute just seems unbelievable. Insane, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah. a 14,000 RPM Formula One car today, you know. Pretty amazing, just unbelievable. Can we, uh, can we fire it up? Now, we, 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 you brought a friend. I brought a friend, uh, Michael, another Michael. Michael Plogg, he is the uh, team leader that built this car oh, from our Classic hello. Center in Germany. Beautiful job, beautiful Thank job. Thank you very much. These guys just do amazing work because they're engineers, and they're historians, and, and uh, the love and care. I mean, it's, it's just to see a piece of history like this is it's pretty amazing to have it in, in person, you know? Because it's, when you're a kid, when I was a kid, none of this stuff even existed anymore. Nobody even thought to save old race cars. They were just sort of driven and thrown you away, threw you them know? Away, yeah. yeah, and yet, uh, you, uh, gentlemen like this can recreate these things exactly they were. And they see these legendary names on the side. It's it's, yep. it's it's just fascinating. We've always been very good about having good archival information, so we're able to do that. And we think it's important that people can relive something, right? right? Not right. just look at it in a book, but hear it, uh, maybe drive in it, uh, and experience what it was like back then. Well, that's what I like about the classics, and you know, one of my favorite Mercedes of all times is my '68 6.3, and I needed. The leveling system was airbags. The yeah, airbags, the valves, was, yeah. just, and I needed a new pump and a few other things. And then, you know, people complain, "Oh, look at the price of this." Well, find one. Find you go find one. You know. <laughs> yeah. But the nice thing is, whatever part you have for any Mercedes, yeah. even going back to SSK, yeah. 
they have it yep. and they can find it. And that's that's the cool part. There's nothing you can't fix or recreate. Well, know? and the thing is, like we often think of uh, some of the cars that we take care of as being relatively young, but you do the math, and even the cars that you think are young are 60 years old. That's now, right. You yeah. Know? So yeah. that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And this <laughs> is. Yeah. It doesn't. And this is almost a hundred-year-old race car. I think mean, about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. Give or take. 10 years or so. Well, very good. Let's uh, let's put the hood back on. Okay. And uh, we'll take it with a spin. Michael, you gonna come with me? Yes, sure. Yeah, you see, you don't let Americans just get in and drive off. You have to, <laughs> you have, to have a true German, yeah, yeah. Pressurizing the fuel tank. We are in neutral. Hit the button. Just a moment. Okay. Mike? Yeah? Spray? Ready? Yeah. Tell me and when. Go on the throttle. Yeah, okay. Ready? Right. Ignition is okay. You're in neutral? <laughs> okay. <laughs> neutral. Home on. Ready to go? All Ready? Right. Ready? Ready to go? Fire in the hole, go. Fire. Yeah. I like the involvement. 
it with the car, you know? And the more effort you put in, the more you get out. The harder you press the brakes, the best, you know, it all. But the Wendy's was a great time. Oh, wonderful. The technology was moving so quickly, you know? Yeah. Just amazing. thank my two Michaels. That was unbelievable. What a treat. I mean, to really drive a piece of history and that classic Mercedes, water temperature perfect, oil pressure perfect, nothing broke. Now, you know, a lot of times you take old cars, oh, they're gonna, no they're, drama, they're, right? it's still, we're in LA traffic. <laughs> yeah. They didn't even dream, dream about traffic like this in 1932. But just to feel the power and the torque, uh, everything is physical. There's so much to do. I love the handbrake and the fact that I mean, these brakes started fading at 60, 60, 70 miles an hour. I can't imagine 140 yeah. pressing that puddle, have it go to the floor. Yeah. Oh my God, these guys had a lot of guts to, to drive. The, and, and again, you, you mentioned that you, you rode with him, Von Bromwich, right? He was yeah. 90 years old yeah. in this car? Yeah. No, it was another one, oh, the Mille Miglia car. The Mille Miglia car, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, that, would, that must have been an honor. Yeah. But someday it you was. will be the old man when this yeah. is around. And they'll come to you and ask you how you built it. And, <laughs> and it'll be cool. It'll be fun. Just to be the custodian of a piece of history like this is such an honor. Thank you, my friend. Thank and you thank very you, much. Michael, thank and, you. And, and for the Mercedes Classic thank Center. You. you know, they bring us so many of these great cars. They preserve history. They save history. They really are true enthusiasts. So thank you very much. This has been the thrill of a lifetime. My and, pleasure. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>